For 16 years, we've been building a site that's been called innovative, insightful, and informative. Now there's a new name for it. We're now NBCNews.com. Two winters passed here in the Colorado Rockies between the untimely demise of Stephanie Roller Bruner and the district attorney's effort to pin the blame on Stephanie's husband, Dale. And he fumed in silence about the allegations against him. The lies are really tough to take. You're like, are you, you know, you just can't believe it. You're like, really? Waiting for trial, he continued to live here, all alone now in the family house by the Blue River, working with his attorney in the effort to clear his name. Robert Bernhardt is the attorney, a man not at all impressed, he told us, with the police investigation. Their position was, I think Dale's the easy guy, you know, the worst pieces of investigating that I've ever seen in my career. That's when Dale and his attorney way. told us that despite a show of interviewing other suspects, the police quite clearly had made up their minds the very day she disappeared. The police came to my house. I, I don't know what the exact first thing he said, but he goes, did you kill your wife? And I was just stunned. The police didn't seem to want to believe what he told them about how happy he was that last evening, discussing new possibilities, a fresh start, when around 9 p.m. their daughter came into the bedroom to ask for help with her homework. When she came into the, our room, we were laying on top of our bed, cuddling. Nor, he said, did the cops seem to want to believe his explanation for not reporting Stephanie missing until morning, more than nine hours after she walked out into that frigid night. Why would he? If he was aware of the fact that she was having an affair, he probably assumed that she went to her boyfriend. The last thing I was going to do was make waves. Just do what you got to do. They made such a big deal of the fact that Dale didn't join the search for Stephanie, even though... I called the police, and they told me, stay home in case she comes home. So, by the time Dale's trial began this past summer, he and his attorney were ready for evidence that was, they knew, only circumstantial. Questions like this. Eaten the way she was beaten on her head and strangled the way she was strangled is a very intimate crime. It's the sort of crime that husbands commit when their wives are about to leave. Or should I say boyfriends? Angry. Or boyfriends. Yeah, well, there you go. That was the point his lawyers wanted to make in court, that police and prosecutors had unfairly brushed off the possibility that Stephanie's new soulmate or his wife had anything to do with it. That would be Ron Holthouse. When everybody found out that Stephanie was missing, did any police officers come and visit you at work or at your home that day? No, they did not. And didn't Ron's wife, Cindy, have a motive? And I said something like, um, I don't know where she is, but I hope she rots in hell. And I'm very sorry I said that. Of course, Dale and his attorney knew the prosecution would make a big deal of that restraining order Stephanie took out after Dale spanked their son, but her decision to ask for that order, said Dale, sprang from her own confusion, the affair, the chaos in her life. I believe she built a, a, a fake little world where I was the bad guy. But was Stephanie ever worried that Dale might get violent? Hardly, said the defense. Why else would she ask the judge to delay the order until after their little family holiday? The judge said he had never seen someone have a restraining order, but then have them say, well, don't enact it yet. Not till next week. And why would she go away on a yoga retreat and decline this friend's offer to babysit. Can I take care of the kids? She said, no, they're fine with Dale. And that's because she knew that Dale wasn't a threat to her. He wasn't a threat to those children. And remember how the detective found the house unusually spotless two weeks after the murder? It was, it turned out, family and friends who cleaned up, apparently because Dale was paralyzed by grief. Dale walks into his walk-in closet and half of the stuff is Stephanie's. And he comes out and he's just crying and he's just like, I gotta get this stuff out of here. So, it's clearly a rush to judgment, a sloppy investigation, said the defense, by detectives who bought the Holt House's alibi too easily, who failed to consider that the murder might have been committed by whoever robbed the nearby bank just before Stephanie disappeared. Attorney Bernhardt confronted CBI agent Greg Sadar. 
you had no direct evidence of Mr. Bruner assaulting his wife. Correct. No direct evidence of, of uh, Mr. Bruner uh, murdering her. Of course, had Dale taken the stand, he'd have had to answer to some stubbornly uncomfortable facts. And this question that hung over the defense table like a cloud. And you loved your wife, you loved her a lot. But in that moment of extreme rage when she was leaving you, you killed her. You strangled her and then threw her body in the river. That's so not true. The theme of the prosecution was that you were an abuser and that you, it was a... It's beyond so not true. It's just not true. They painted quite a picture, though. Oh, yes, they certainly did. With the help of a woman whose message, in a way, came back from the grave. Coming up, Stephanie speaks. I'm here, asking for help. <laughs> and so does another voice from the past. He had a look on his face that I'd never seen or recognized before. What secrets will she reveal?